Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to Alter Ego. Right now we are an infant. These are our stats. We're very happy. We're not very thoughtful or trustworthy, apparently, but we have a lot of confidence, and we're very good at social stuff. So let's find some more things to do as an infant. Let's work on our brain power. Lying on your stomach in the crib, you notice an interesting object at arm's distance away. It has a round shape at the top and a ring on the bottom. Um... I uh, feel determined, and I am going to grasp for the object. You have a fighting spirit of your uncle, Bill! Yeah! You sneak and crawl on your belly like a combat soldier heading into battle. You'd reach your destination, grasp the rattle confidently, and drool it out into victory. <laughs> I love the smell of a rattle in the morning. Intellectual sphere marks a uh, marked increase. I'm going to shake the rattle. No, I'm going to yell, a, emit a pleasurable <laughs> yell. Victory! This stimulates vocal cords and language centers in your brain. Good language skills are essential to development. Intellectual sphere increases. No one is looking. Give a little yell yourself for choosing this action. <laughs> Go on. Did you do it? Yes. Good. I just gave you some extra social points for being a good sport. Ooh. All right. Let's do um. Let's do this family thing at the bottom. You are playing on a warm uh, outside on a warm. Sunny day. I am carefree, and I'm going to play with trucks. I love trucks. One of your favorite games is to throw the truck up in the air. S trucks up in the air, so they crash on top of each other. One lands on top of you and scratches your forehead. It begins to bleed. Bleed. Who do you go um, to for help? Nobody. You're too young to take care of a cut like this on your own. It gets infected and hurts for two weeks. You experience moderate physical discomfort, which makes you cranky. Well, so far, my parents have been completely negligent and incompetent. I would have gone to Grandma if she would have been home. I would have gone to Super Duck if he'd been there. But it seemed like my parents weren't very reliable. Um, ooh, I'll do another intellectual. You are touching something smooth and shiny. You pat it with your hand a few times. Um, confused? I'm going to keep on touching. This is a little flat and a little cool. Wait a minute, there's a baby in there! Who is that baby? It's gotta be me. Why would there be another baby in here? That's right, you're looking at yourself in the mirror. Isn't that a beautiful baby? Yes, yes I am a beautiful baby. You are quite stunning. Are you kidding on me, game? You're developing a positive self-image. I don't want those in real life. <laughs> Alright, let's do the love. You have just awakened from a nice long nap. Oh, it's tough being a baby, you know. I eat and I poop myself. Your mom comes to the room and wants to hold you. Um, she wants to hold me? Get the fuck off me! I'm going to cry and be cranky. Do not touch me. You must be in a very foul mood today. Mood swings such as these are quite common with babies your age. Hey, I have mood swings in real life. What are you saying? Are you saying I'm a baby game? Fortunately, when babies are too cranky, the parents see this as a sign of rejection. Go back to sleep and wake up later. You have just awakened from a nice long nap. Your mom comes in and wants to hold you. I'm going to be cranky and cry. Don't touch me, harlot! <laughs> I'm going to do it again. <laughs> do not touch me, whore! Alright, um, at this point I'm cranky, but I'm going to do nothing. You have chosen an inappropriate response. Or at least we hadn't thought of it. Please make a different re thing. Uh, they don't like the fact that I'm going to be cranky and do nothing. I'm going to be sleepy and do nothing. Uh, eh. It's a dog's life, isn't it? Nothing to do all day except for eat, sleep, and wonder what life will be like when you're older. Does life really change it for two? Mom is coming closer. Ignore her. You pretend I have other things to do. Like talk to the rattle. Bah, 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 bah. Ignore her. She'll go away, rattle. Your mom tries to get your attention by making clicking noises with her mouth and calling your name. I'm going to ignore her. Am I some sort of dog for you make clicking noises at? Go away. Fickle child, you've hurt your mother's feelings. You could have given her a smile. She does not deserve one. She is not grandma. Well done. She should learn her place. It's too emotional. Up until this point in life, Weasley Rabbit. Wabbit. Your stuffed toy has been one of your best friends. You take him with you everywhere, but he's beginning to get on in years. One of his ears is torn off, and the recent eye injury has made his face look a little lopsided. It's suggested that Weasley should be retired. You wake up one day and discover Weasley has been moved from the place where you last spotted him. Uh-oh. I am going to be s suspicious and seek information. Where is my friend Weasley Wabbit? He has been kidnapped! And confront Mom with the fact that Weasley was not in the spot where he was last deposited. Mother, 
Where is Weasley Wabbit? She claims not to have seen him. You are. I am not satisfied with that harlot's answer. Wisely, you persist. This time she tells you Weasley left because he wanted to be with friends who were more like him. That is not what Weasley is like. Weasley is not like that. Weasley accepts me for who I am, and he is not negligent to my needs, mother. She tells you that the next week you have a new visitor, a brand new friend, who will be just as nice as Weasley you are. I am not satisfied. I am not such a fickle child that my friends can be replaced with new ones. I will not abandon Weasley. What if he needs me? Bravo, don't fall for that line of bull. Parents are great at fabricating stories. Even the narrator agrees that my mom's a liar. Like this when they uh, make mistakes. You will not get your Weasley Wabbit back, but your intelligence and perseverance in this situation make it harder for your parents to tell you made-up stories to cover their mistakes. Weasley Rabbit, I'll never forget you. Damn that lying whore stealing my best friend. You're sitting in a large place, and a furry man walks up to you. He's walking around you in circles. Uh, you, what the fuck? I'm going to be a little frightened, but I'm going to try to talk to him. You scream. Not a real scream, just to let the man just know, stay away. The man yells back, woo, woo, woo. His noises are much louder than yours. They scare you even more. He comes right up next to you. I am going to grab I'm going to push him off of me. Get off of me, sir! Furry dog man! The man is heavy. This is good exercise. He looks back at you while you're pushing him off and blows his nose right in your face. How rude! And why are my parents not watching me? I like animals, but certain animals should not be left alone with an infant. Well, that was... My parents are terrible. I remember when I fed my dad mud. That was hilarious. It is announced that to you that, that during a heart-to-heart -heart talk that it is time for you to give up the bottle and drink from the glass like a big boy. I don't... I don't want to. I don't want to. I like the bottle. Good things come in a bottle like beer. I am angry and stubborn and I refuse. You're just trying to steal everything you... I love, mother, like you stole Weasley Wabbit. How am I going to show my resistance? I'm going to throw the bottle at mommy's fat head. You must really be furious. The bottle is no more than just a casual drinking body. It is a constant companion. It has been a source of comfort and a weapon against adversaries. My mother is my adversary. You come to think of it as an extension of yourself. Mom doesn't understand this at all, and you get whacked for being disrespectful. What? I will learn to live without it, but I will not forget this whacking of me. It will be tough for a while. You turn to Super Duck for comfort. Only he understands. Believe me, cold turkey is the best way to do it. Good luck. Thank you. Man, life is tough as a baby. Wait, what is this one? Social? Okay, let's do some social stuff. Early in the afternoon, you watch your father as he tries to fix the lawnmower. Oh god, if it was like when my dad worked on things in real life as a kid, I'm going to learn some new words. <laughs> He's given the lawnmower a name. Lawnmower's name is Fuckburger. You have a toy lawnmower just like his dad's. Later in the afternoon, your parents tell you to go to your room well, and play while relatives visit. You feel neglected. I'm always neglected. Um, I'm going to pretend I'm dad. I'm going to play with my own fuckburger lawnmower. Play and pretend it makes you the grown-up, sending mom and dad to their room. Now you pretend to be just like dad. I'm fixing the lawnmower. I'm a fucking piece of fuck shit burger, fuck burger, fuck burger. I'm just like dad. I'm going to call out the name of the lawnmower. Fuck burger! Oh, fuck burger! Oh, you sound just like Dad. This is fun. You scream it loud so everyone can hear how big you are. You're pounding feet. Thumps up, thumps up, thumps up. It's Mom. She looks upset. And this is very confusing. You can lecture about the good words and the bad words. Lawnmower seems to be a bad word. You don't quite understand. You know, that is one thing I hate in real life, though. Is I know people are like kitchen at swear, but that is such bullshit. It's just people like, I want my kid to be this fake, happy, cute, and innocent thing. If, if, you, if you're going to swear sooner or later, when you hit middle school probably, or when you're adult usually. So it's, it's like, what's the point? You're making the kid be something he's not. If he's just repeating words he's heard, as long as they're not like offensive in like calling people names, then big deal. So he called the lawnmower fuck burger. I swear, pants and the double standard? How do I understand? I'm just an infant. 
It is the middle of the day, and you get that heavy feeling in your stomach. You think it might be time to go potty. Your mother is not in the immediate vicinity. Is she ever around? I am going to get slightly concerned. I am going to call for mother. Because I'm trying to be potty trained. You call for your mother, but she just doesn't seem to hear you. Oh my god. Doesn't she ever listen? Alright, I've got to take care of this myself. I'll try something else. You tried to get to the bathroom, but the door is closed and you can't open it. There's large buckets sitting outside the bathroom door. I want to go in my pants. You know what? That idiot mom can't be here to take care of it. She can clean my poopy pants. The bucket would definitely have been a better choice. Flexibility and adaptation are very desirable characteristics that can take you very far. Now your mom has to clean your mess. This makes her angry at you. Me? Angry at me? I tried to ask that harlot to take me to the bathroom. She was too busy whoring it up, I'm guessing. Ignoring me. That's much nicer. He lets me feed him mud. You walk into your bedroom, about to go to sleep. The dark shapes stare at you from every corner of the room. Headlights cast eerie shadows on the wall. You have heard that the toad monster sneaks into the little boy's rooms and hides under the bed. You can almost hear him breathing now, just like the story said. Oh god, I am frightened. I am going to look under the bed. You search into the bed and see the shadows of toys and socks up under the bed. A stuffed animal's glassy eyes shine through the darkness. Everything is quiet. What was that? Only a noise from downstairs. The toad monster doesn't seem to be here. Tonight, anyway. Well, that's a relief. I'm glad the toad monster didn't give me. You are a large department store with your mother and her friend. It is so crowded that all you can see is the forest of tall, grown-up legs. Your mother lets go of you so she can feel the material of the dress she wants to buy. Of course! Of course she does! Oh my god. Everything is buzzing. Look! The toy department! It is time for adventure to go to toys. This was a very impulsive set of choices. Your desire to explore your surroundings is a sign of intelligence, but this intelligence is not tempered for the desire to keep yourself safe. As a result, you get separated from your mother and lost. Um, I'm going to walk to the left. I hope that's the, where the toys are. A good idea, but it doesn't seem to work. You get points for trying a reasonably, uh, reasonable strategy to acquire assistance. This is a sign of intelligence. Let's walk to the right. We're not doing the time warp again, though. The movement of people confuses you even more. What we do? I'm going to walk to the left again. All right, I'll stay in one spot. A man in a blue uniform finds you and reunites you with your mother. Reunited, and it sucks so bad. You are greatly relieved that your mother would not leave you someplace and forget you. You behave yourself for the rest of the day as a gesture of thanks. It's always fun getting lost from your parents because they don't pay attention when you're a child. At my age, that's not a problem anymore. <laughs> I'm old enough, I think. A group of your parents' closest friends have come over for dinner. You have fed early and put up upstairs to entertain yourself, of course, by myself. I am... I am curious, and I... No, I am angry, and I'm going to sneak downstairs. Cause I want to play with my blocks that are down there. I don't blame you for feeling angry at your parents. After all, who's more important? A bunch of stupid friends at you. Yes, I am, though, in flesh and blood. You peek out of your room and head down the stairs. You have everyone in your sights. I'm going to keep sneaking. Because if I can sneak past some of the toys, I can stay up and play. And those idiots won't know. You look around the bed and spy a table full of cookies that your mother has baked for all the guests. What nerve? Um. Uh, I want to ask my mother for a cookie in front of all of her friends. So they can see what a bad mother she is if she says no. Intellectual sphere takes a giant leap. How can she refuse without looking like an ogre? You spo savor the spoils of victory. Excellent! <laughs> cookie. C is for cookie. It's all for me. Family time. Dad must be getting his teeth fixed, and you must go with him to the dentist. <sighs> Mom is busy at work. Mom doesn't have a job. Her job's being a negligent whore. And Dad couldn't find a sitter. I'm sorry, Father. You sit in the waiting room for a very, very long time. Dad must run out and put money in the parking meter. Dad sits you on the floor and gives you a magazine to leave through and tells you to behave. Um, I'm going to be patient and I'm going to take off my shoes because I want to get comfortable. What? That? <laughs> they're like, no, that's not... Okay, well, I'm going to behave. Then. I'm going to be patient and behave for Dad. So that mom's going to be even more mad. Your ability to keep yourself amused is a sign of early maturity. This will help you intellectually and creatively. I'm going to go visit the nurse. Hey, baby. I'm a baby. The nurse is too busy to pay attention to you, even though you work up the courage to go right near her. Um, 
I'm gonna go sit quietly while Dad gets his teeth fixed. You are what a well-behaved boy! You amuse yourself by looking through the magazines. What's this? A lady with no clothes on? Dad will never believe this! How silly! Oh, oh, oh. What kind of magazine was that in a dentist's office? I hope we got home and she's, Mom was like, Was he a brat? And Dad's like, No, he was well-behaved. What? He never is for me! Yeah, suck it, Mom. Today is Dad's birthday. Would you like to make him breakfast? I would like to make him an extravagant one. I am going to try and make him eggs. What kind of eggs do you want to make? I am going to... Uh, I'm going to scramble eggs. You must think that a young child can do a lot. The best you can do is throw them in a pot roll and give them to Dad. Which is exactly what you do. He's in bed sleeping. I'm going to feed him the raw eggs with a spoon. Just like the mud. Hope he doesn't get someone out. Someone out. Boy, is he surprised. He probably thinks this is going to be the best birthday ever. Mom is laughing very hard. Dad's eggs dripping on the bed. Happy birthday, father! I have fed you. You have just passed through infancy. A brief look at your life up to this time shows the following. Your family life has been not very good. You seem to be lacking the bonds that are so critical during this phase of life. Don't blame me. Blame that harlot of a negligent mother. Physically, you've been a healthy baby. Yay! Even though I drink poison because nobody paid attention to me. Socially during this phase in life, nothing much is really expected of you. After all, you're still much too young to throw a successful cocktail party. I have made mud for my dad to eat and raw eggs, so thank you. And frankly, anyone who still dribbles on himself probably wouldn't make the ideal dinner guest. However, by now there are some things you should have mastered. Your progress in this area shows... You've been the type of child who charms the lollipops off people. I'm like, hey, baby, that's a nice lollipop. How about you let me have a lick? Mm -hmm. You have been the type of child who is huggable and gets cheeks pinched by old ladies with bright red lipstick. Ah, oh, the ladies love me. Now, regarding your emotional and physical uh, personality development. Oh, that, that's the one where I'm like, ah, oh, let's not look at that. You're not exactly the type of child who could be trusted to wash his hands before coming to the dinner table. Fuck that. If there's a piece of cake sitting in the refrigerator at noon, chances are it will be in your tummy by dinner. Victory! I will eat what I find. I am a scavenger. Your thoughtfulness characteristic really doesn't count for much in this module. Most children often find themselves at the mercy of their whims and impulses. You're allowed to be cranky now. People will tolerate it much better than when you are a teenager. Then your whining and carrying on will seem more objectionable. One thing about your character that has a tendency to put people off is your aggressiveness. You are the type of baby who likes to pull on loose pieces of clothing, hair, and bulbous fleshy objects that come within your reach. Like boobs? You are going to have to learn the meaning of make nice. I refuse to learn any of that. That wraps up your status for the first module. I hope you like yourself. If not, you can always try to improve yourself in the modules to come. There's plenty of time. So we have grown now. We were a little infant me. Little infant super Paul. I had so much fun being a jerk. <laughs> and now we've gotten older. Um, so we are going on to the next phase. Ch Welcome to childhood. We will do that in the next episode. Um, thank you for watching, everybody. I'm growing up right before your eyes.